Hi everyone and welcome to The Crow Show brought to you by Foodland. I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith. Well, 13 games down and we're already well into the second half of the season. Yes, and after yesterday's clash with Hawthorne, the boys now enjoy a week off. But we'll still be here. Coming up in today's show, how does travel affect performance? And the defender who's making the most of his opportunities. But first, when it comes to stress, there's probably nothing in the AFL that compares to the coach's box. As the game unfolds, pressure intensifies and cool heads are needed. Don Pike usually has at least 10 others in the box with him, including line coaches, development coaches, statisticians and injured players. Analyst Wade Watts gives us an insight into what goes on. We've been speaking about the Adelaide forward line and you can see what's going on here. Tex is trying to give him instructions about what they need to do or what they're not doing at the moment. Hi guys, we're here at Adelaide Oval. I'm here to give you a tour of the coach's box on game day. Alright guys, this is the coach's box. Uh, it's a high pressure environment, but it's always nice and calm and collaborative in here. But at Adelaide Oval, everyone sits in the same spot every week. So up here we've got Pikey. Uh, next to him is Jared Harkness, the footy analysis manager. So he basically has vision that Don wants to look at and any other stats that Pikey's after. Next is Doc Clark, so our new women's coach. Also our ruck coach, and he's in charge of the rucks and our centre bounce. So what's good, what's bad for the centre bounce for the game. And next to him is Brett Burton, the footy manager, and he's basically overseeing the whole box that we're keeping calm and in charge of anything that goes wrong in terms of injuries and updating Pikey and the coaches on player availability. Holds onto it, Seedsman well and truly within range. Outstanding. So up the back here we've got our four computers for our vision. So each game we get four angles of vision coming in. So the broadcast vision that you get on TV, a wider version of that, and then a camera set up behind each goal. So we get each of those and that vision comes in and then we churn it out to all the line coaches and analysts for them to watch it during the game. So down the front row, this is where the line coaches and analysts sit. So I'm the mids, midfield analyst. Um, I'm looking at stoppages and how the midfielders are performing throughout the game. And next to me is Scott Camparelli, the mids coach. And basically I'm helping him find any faults in the mids or any way that the stoppages are breaking down. And he's just got the stats in front of him. So basically looking at how the mids are going. Got the little handball out, Tex got it! Alright guys, we're still setting up the coach's box, so in a few hours it'll be game time, so I better leave you to it. Certainly no shortage of advice, that's for sure. Now, few first round draft picks have had to work as hard for an AFL debut as Tom Duday. Selected with pick 17 at the 2015 National Draft, Duday spent two years honing his skills in the Sandful before an opportunity opened up at the start of this season. In this chat, brought to you by Revolution Roofing, he reflects on his journey to his AFL debut and how he's made the most of his chance. The two years was just massive for me in my development in terms of physically, mentally, game plan, everything. Learning from the best over two years and playing on the best forwards over two years in pre-season just, yeah, prepared me really well. Well done, mate. All right. Good plan. You're in. All right. Good man. Thank you, mate. Oh, f***ing dude, mate. Got some great news for your mother. We'll be playing on Friday night. Oh, Tom, that is just so f***ing good. <laughs> Did well the youngster in two days. Yeah, a lot of relief. I'd been stressing over it probably since day one of pre-season, to be honest, it'd been in my head. It probably got me through pre-season. Yeah, once I finally got the news, I was just excited to get out of there, but yeah, also a bit of relief that it was finally coming true. Heads long towards Cox. He's got Walters if he wants to knock it on. Mark it and give it, that'll do. Pride myself on my uh, my one-on-ones and my contests. I got outmarked. Thought I'd better chase down to make up for this and then just put the head down and was hoping to get there and then luckily timed it so that as he was about to kick it, I got an arm on him and yeah, hold the ball. Looks up, gets the protection. Oh, what a chase by Duday. Yeah, I was pretty pooped by the end of it. I was just put my head down and tried to get there as quick as I could. Focus is probably mainly just to play our brand of football to like roll our sleeves up and just start getting into the contest and trying to win our ball, play back our way, the way that we know we can play. The effort's been there, the intent's been there, and we're putting in the hard yards. We've just got to start doing it the way that we know we can do it. Now, history tells us that finals contenders must be able to win on the road. 
Each week, teams cross the country, sometimes spending up to four hours in the air. So, how much does travel affect a side's performance? Mark, you can speak from experience. What did you find? Yeah, oh, look, early on, we had lots of issues. We couldn't win on the road when it was new to everyone. But after a while, when you get used to it, you understand uh, the routines that, you know, you, get, you put them in place, then I think you start to have some consistency on the road, which is pretty much what it's all about. So, what are some of the traps and the downsides of travel? Oh, look, I guess for young players, you haven't travelled that much. Um, you know, the all-you-can-eat buffet breakfast, you know, the attitude, sometimes you might go to the Gold Coast or Brisbane and it can be a bit laid back and coaches always worry that you're in holiday mode. That's the term they generally use. So, as I said, the more you do it, and particularly experienced players, they come up with their own routine and generally they find that consistency. There is an enormous amount of talk about it, but when we look overseas at sports and different codes, teams do it all the time. Are the, are the problems overstated in our league? Um, maybe. Um, like I said before, generally the good teams find a way to overcome it. I, I, I still think as a sport and a national competition, we're still relatively young. So I, I feel like the really good clubs get those routines right and generally they're able to do it. And um, I remember in our day, 98, when we had that successful finals campaign, our last minor round game was in Perth and we went to Melbourne, Sydney, Melbourne, Melbourne. So five weeks on the road, uh, um, and we actually still won that, that fifth game and won the premiership. So it has been done, but uh, I think every club's just striving to try and find that formula. You've mentioned getting routine right. So how should players approach away trips? Oh, look, they just need to make sure that uh, the eating is still the same. Just trying to replicate as close as you can things like, you know, getting up and doing stuff during the day and yeah, just coming up with a formula that works. I know some players will have something that's slightly different to where they're home, but whatever works, you know, and you stick with it. Yep, it's no holiday. All right, thanks very <laughs> much for that, Mark. Well, still to come on The Crow Show, the little kids who make Smithers smile. Brody Smith recovers from that serious knee injury. There are many days when he needs something to take his mind off rehab. That's why he looks forward to having a chat with some of the club's junior members, all thanks to Thomas Farms. Welcome to Thomas Farm Junior Jams. This week we have Ava. Hello Ava. Hi. Can you tell me how old you are? 11. 11. Do you play footy? No. What about any other sports? I do dance. Dance, nice. Um, and who's your favourite footy player? Eddie Betts. Eddie Betts, we've had that answer a lot. What about second favourite, any defenders or? Brady Smith. Yeah, good answer. <laughs> we're gonna get along just fine. If you were invisible for a day, what would you do? Annoy the teachers. Annoy, I love that answer, that's a good one. I'd probably do the exact same thing <laughs> around here. What's the best thing about being a kid? That it's free. <laughs> the pain in mind. Yeah, that's a good one. If you had a million dollars, what would you spend it on? Party and squishies. Excuse me? Putty and squishy. Party and squishy, what's that? Putty. Putty. What's it's a putty? Fidget toy. Like like oh. slime. Okay. How much are they normally? Three dollars. Some of there's big ones for like ten dollars, but I like the little ones. How many of those could you get with a million dollars? I don't know. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> you got a game to play with you. Can you tell me what these photos are? Uh, tape. Yep, videotape. Uh, old mobile phone. Easy one. The Telstra phone thingy. Phone uh, box? Have phone you ever box? used a phone box? No. No, I've I didn't think so. <laughs> a desk. <laughs> Who does that look like? Rory Lair. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. All right. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. <laughs> If you'd like to sign up as a junior member, go to 19thman.com.au. Now, footballers have a strong physical presence, which could be mistaken for invincibility. But the pressure to perform means players can face significant emotional issues, which can impact not only themselves, but everyone around them. The Adelaide Football Club recognises this and has formed a partnership with Breakthrough Mental Health Research Foundation to support players' welfare. 
There's a big focus on mental health at the Adelaide Footy Club, and, and um, you know, for, for a variety of reasons. Obviously, you know, we're there to support our players, and um, you know, our role is to to help them to be the best they can be. And, and, and part of that is uh, making sure they're in a good state of mind for a start. We talk about the mind driving the body, and so you know, it's, it's a physical sport, but clearly we, we know that they have to be in a, a good mental state to be able to, to, to drive their body. So the organisation is a not-for-profit um, organisation. Um, it's been established to tackle mental health head-on, so it has a primary focus of really driving uh, new revenue streams to invest purely in mental health research for South Australia. Well, the benefits with the uh, Adelaide Football Club are just, are just immense. You've got an organisation there that's got a trusted voice, and we can't actually take on this battle for mental health on our own, and we need to do it in clear partnerships. So the passion that the Crows have to actually drive the mental health conversation, to actually look after the well-being and resilience of their own players and their own fan bases is immense. They're under uh, immense pressure and so we need to be able to give them the tools uh, to be able to deal with that and, um, and make sure they're in uh, you know, a good uh, mental state to be able to, to handle those pressures. When Mark returns after the break, different teams, different games, but they both play for the Crows. Rick Davies is one of the most famous names in South Australian football. A legend at the Sturt Football Club, the Ruckman turned forward won an impressive seven best and fairest awards to go with two premierships. Davies' performance in the 1976 grand final is a thing of folklore, where he collected 42 disposals, 21 hitouts, and an incredible 15 marks. In this High Flyers segment brought to you by Flight Centre, Davies relives that amazing day. Very close. Well, it was the one over Chris Nat, of course. I, I feel sorry for Chris. It was on the outer side boundary at Adelaide Oval. And it was just a bit of luck. The ball came in and I sort of was up there and you, you take a mark and it lasts forever, doesn't it? 1976, what's that, you know, years and years ago. But uh, what a great day, that 76, you know, really. David. It was the best part of footy, not these days, is it? Unfortunately, it's possession footy, isn't it? Rather than just chip it away over there and around the corner, which is frustrating to watch. You know, the Malcolm Blights and the Gary Ablets of this world, the Wayne Careys, even um, Kappa, you know, jump over everybody. That used to be a really important part of our game that's not quite as there today. Phil Carmen, well, what a champion he was jumping over. Peter Motley, you know, Mott's from, came out from Sturt, Port Adelaide, his family was called Port Adelaide. He could fly like a Bird, he was just unbelievable. You know, and the AFL, like Dermot Brereton's and I said Wayne Carey, like fantastic grabs. And I know there's a lot of people out there and they're all saying, you know, the football these days is not as good as it was. Look, it's still the most exciting game in the world, but it just frustrates you a little bit. There's no contest in the air, but when there is, you know, little Eddie Betts when he flies over the top of the pack, it's just so exciting. And big, you know, big Texie Walker coming out, taking a beautiful big mark. That's what we look forward to. Now, the Crows have only five games left at Adelaide Oval this year, so there's no better time to buy a bronze membership. For just $99, you'll receive general admission access to three home matches, as well as a membership kit and priority access to finals tickets. Just head to 19thman.com.au for details, and don't forget to check out our new Twitter account, at The Crows Show. If you needed convincing that the eSports phenomenon is taking hold in Australia, then the latest move by the AFL should sway you. It's announced plans to build a new stadium in Melbourne specifically for electronic sports. The Crows have made a significant investment in a digital competition by buying Team Legacy, whose professional players train up to five hours a day. But how does sitting in front of a screen compare to the punishment of being an AFL footballer? Let's find out in a quick fire Q&A. I train about four hours with the team at night. Not as long as in pre-season. Probably on average 14 to 16 hours a day. Probably two hours a day, I'd say. Eight hours. Make some noise for Legacy's Probe. Six times a week. Five times a week. Every day. Desperate efforts. We don't get to travel often. 
Uh, every second week. Hell of a lot. <laughs> uh, every second week. If you're the best team, you'll probably leave the country three times a year. At major tournaments I compete, you know, maybe once a month. Most days? Uh, pretty much every day. For ten weeks, every weekend we'll play a game. We compete about every two months. Before games, I tend to actually try and cool down and not think about it too much. And make sure the team's up at least two hours before the game. For me, it'd probably be two and a half hours. Uh, about two hours. I just get up and do my own thing and then see what happens when the game comes around. Blair is an MVP candidate at the moment. On average, a game would last uh, 10 minutes and you have it like a best of three, so 30 minute series. Two hours. Three hours, maybe? It takes about I'd say like an hour average. The shortest game is maybe 25 minutes on the competitive stage and then it can go from anywhere till maybe 50 an hour. Doesn't matter as Draw Bella gets rid of the mech. I have five teammates. 44. I have four teammates. 21 each week. Well, StarCraft's a 1v1 game, so by myself, but Legacy does have a StarCraft division and they help me in. There's five or six players on it. 44, 21 on the field. Only one coach. Fifteen? Two coaches. Starcraft coaches, just me. There's that many these days, I'd say 15 to 20 out there at the moment. Make no mistake, eSports is already huge and it's only getting bigger. Stay with us, we'll find out which teams have surprised and which players have impressed. Each week we appreciate the remarkable skills of footballers across all clubs. In this segment, we ask Crows players which attributes they admire in others and wouldn't mind having themselves. Had a good last five minutes, Adelaide. Needed to parlay that into a goal. And Jacobs delivers. Welcome to Toyota Hybrid Heroes. Today's AFL players need to be very multidimensional. That requires players to have strength, endurance and speed. The attributes that I would love is I'd love to have Charlie Cameron speed, to be able to break the lines and to be able to cover the ground like he does. The second attribute is to have Brody Smith's kick. He's such a damaging player off half back and I think that would be a real weapon in today's game. Important ball to be won, Smith had the speed. Oh, well played. And the skill as well. Now, as plenty of tipsters have found out, it's been difficult to pick consistent winners this year. So, which teams have surprised the fans so far? I think Carlton have actually surprised me this year. They're playing, but not winning. There's been a few surprise packets. Essendon keeps sort of improving, so after all the troubles they've been through, so yeah, they've probably been right up there. I think West Coast has surprised me. Um, I thought they would have been in the top eight. I certainly didn't think they'd be going along as well as they are at the moment. Well, Melbourne's still in the right at the moment after flogging us last week. Oh, look, North Melbourne, um, uh, you know, I mean, with a bunch of young kids that they've got, they've, uh, I don't think people would have uh, given the that to, to flourish and improve is what they have done. Staying with the fans, let's find our crow in the crowd. So many to choose from, let's settle on you. If you recognise yourself, contact the club by 5pm next Wednesday. Be ready with a photo ID and a merchandise pack will be yours courtesy of Toyota. That just about wraps up our show for this week, thanks to Foodland. And Mark, the players might enjoy having a break from games next weekend, but they certainly won't be getting a weekend off training. No, that's right. And there'll still be plenty of news out of the club, so visit the website afc.com.au, as well as Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And make sure you check out our Twitter account, at The Crow Show, and give us a follow. Indeed. Thanks for your company today. We look forward to joining you again next Sunday at 11.30 on 7. We'll see you then. Bye for now.